right, but there's some deep, deep moments I want to go into because you're talking about highs and lows. Now, Ollie, you've been clean and sober for 14 years, but what's the lowest you got to? The lowest? Mate, the lowest I, yeah, I was, I was, was um, the day I walked into rehab, Simon, um, as you've heard a couple of times. Um, yeah, still, still gets me every time. When, he, um, when I, I, I was lucky enough that, um, you know, I'd, 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 he was on you know, massive benders, three-day benders and all the rest of it, doing every drug and everything I could possibly do. And finally got a, a, you know, some help and support uh, to get me into rehab. Uh, and, oh, yeah, and uh, by this stage, uh, you know, I was you know, broken the whole lot. So, and I actually said, yes, yeah, so I'll go. Um, and then uh, probably the lowest point was I got picked up uh, to go. And um, the, the, uh, then uh, we, we went into, uh, got to Ivanhoe Clinic. And yeah, just before, just so people know, like you, you had been on a three-day bender before this, hadn't you? Yeah, before, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so, like, and like how much, how, just, just give us how much alcohol and how much cocaine you were taking one day. Oh, God. I'd, I'd start just up. give us the, show us the pattern, show us the pattern. Okay, yeah, I'd, I'd get up in the morning and uh, have um, four lines of Coke, uh, four shots of vodka for breakfast. Um, then I'd, I'd, um, I'd go and do a, a, a couple of hours' work. I'd go to a, a pub somewhere, wherever I was. Uh, the first call I'd make is a, uh, I'm a drug dealer. He'd come to the pub uh, where I was, uh, drop me off a bag of Coke, uh, sometimes two. I'd sit there and drink and uh, make a few phone calls calls uh then i go just then throughout the day i just move on to pub to pub and just uh just keep drinking and, and doing drugs then uh, finally i get to the, my last pub which i'd be uh near my near my place uh i'd stay there till let the end of the um the end of the night uh usually a drug dealer drop by again uh give me another gram of coke um uh, so i'd stay there little stumps i would buy a bottle of vodka um, I'd go home, i drink the bottle of vodka, uh, have the bag of Coke, uh, leave enough vodka for breakfast in the morning, enough um, Coke to, for the breakfast in the morning, take a handful of sleeping pills, uh, go to sleep and wake up the next day and do the whole thing over again. And that wasn't one or two times a week, was it? That was, no, that was pretty much every day, yeah. And so you got to the stage where somebody said you want to go to rehab. And what'd you say yeah. to that? What, yeah, why, was, did you, why did you say yes? Um, well, yeah, yeah, uh, Barry, Barry Mitchell rang me, good mate, Sydney Swans teammate, and he, he rang me at an, an opportune time where I'd just been out and for three days and I was just absolutely smashed, sick of the life. I was tired. I was exhausted. Um, and he said, mate, I want to take you to a doctor. And I said, yeah, okay. He said, I'll pick you up tomorrow. He took me to, at that time, the Carlton Football Club doctor, which was Dr. Ben Barassi. And um, ben, ben just sat down, never seen him before. He sat down in front of me and said, mate, do you want to go to Rio? And I said, yeah, I'll go. Uh, but I had nothing at this stage. I was tapped out. Um, so Mary Williams, uh, Greg Williams' wife, Diesel, he, they went about to all my clubs and raised the money uh, for me to get, to get there. But it was like 28 grand. I had nothing. So I took a couple of weeks. So, of course, the two weeks I kept going. I didn't say, I said I was going to rehab and didn't say I was going to stop doing drugs <laughs> so at the time. And then finally, we went, I got the call. Uh, I said, look, Mary rang me and said, listen, we've got your bed, we've got the money. Da, da, da. You've got to be home on Sunday at a certain time and we'll pick you up and take you there. So I just went on this massive last hurrah bender, uh, just drank anything I could, any drug I could possibly get my hands on and, drink, you know, everything, and um, sort of got home, and um, that night, I remember, I got home on that night that morning, uh, had my last, there was a couple of stubbies in the fridge, I knocked those off, bit of vodka, last lot of coke, went and packed a suitcase, uh, for some reason, there was a brand new footy in the um, in the cupboard, so I grabbed the footy and put it under my arm, and um, and I got picked up and went to rehab, uh, it was a mate of mine, uh, Mitzi, Peter Metropolis, good mate of mine. And he dropped me off at the um, at the at the, that that time it was um, sun, uh, Sunday, which was visiting day, and so the front entrance was shut. Um, so he had to go back through a back courtyard, and and it's visiting day, so all the fr- uh, people's family and loved ones were in there. 
And um, did you just ask you that already, Simon? Um, no, that's all right, mate. We get through it. Mate, I've been well, done it for 12 months. I know you can. And uh, I'm not, and, I, I, um, I want to lift this to you, Marcus, in a moment. Yeah, keep going. And um, then I... Um, he said I wasn't allowed to swear either, but we might have to do. <laughs> yeah, might have. You can leave. leave we, we'll we do we, one. And um, so then I think it's it's okay. It's in context. Okay, then um, yeah, and I sort of got out and gave Mitch, got Mitchy, Mitchy a hug and grabbed my bag and put my um, wall uh, footy under my arm. And there's about fifty people in the courtyard, and I had to go through this back gate. And um, oh, it gets me. Keep going, mate. Keep going. And um, I opened up the uh, gate, and all at one time, these everybody just turned around and looked at me, and I just, I just at that time, I just fell to my knees, and I just said, "Fuck!" Everything hit me. What I and I just said, "Fuck!" What have I done to my body? How I've abused it? What have I done to my friends, my family? How could I have done this to myself? And and I would just yeah, and I would, and I and I just couldn't believe it. It was like just this big lightning bolt hit me all at once. And and I, and I walked and I walked in there, and they took me for a medical check. And I was like, you know, I had purple lips and a grey face, and they said that you know if I hadn't got in there, that I got the help and got in there, I probably would have about two three days to live. My system was starting to shut down. So. How long, and I just to repeat, mate, how long ago was that? Uh, 14 years now. 14 years. Now, it's a, it's a, strong, it's a very powerful story and, and it's an amazing story. And, to, and I will talk a little bit, give you a little bit of a breather, uh, uh, Wally, but Mark... Mm-hmm.